General Junwei stood upon a catwalk high above his newly claimed monument of American capitalism, the Jewel of Alaska, Anchorage's Goliathan oil refinery that served as his throne in the freshly occupied region. One of the few remaining oil refineries in the world, plus with the boon of untapped resources waiting to be processed and then consumed in the war effort. Jin Wei, ever the shrewd tactician, had been planning the liberation of Anchorage for quite some time, steadfastly monitoring the American presence in the region, until finally, in the winter of 2066, he saw his chance to strike, and strike he did. Thousands of elite Chinese airborne forces rained down upon the unsuspecting capitalist devils below, quickly overwhelming and exercising them from their strategic positions surrounding Anchorage. Perhaps a lesser man might have reveled in his success, but not Jin Wei. He knew, although the battle was won, the war was far from over, and the unyielding oil reserves of Anchorage would be far too tempting a target for the United States military to leave in Chinese hands, for any time to be wasted on such frivolity. No, he had much work to do in order to prepare his forces for the inevitable counterattack, a task made significantly more challenging due to the current state of his beloved homeland. Short on both resources and manpower, few, if any, reinforcements would be sent to his aid. As such, Jinwei knew he would need to defend his conquest with anything and everything that his foe had left behind in their haste to withdraw. Drawing inspiration from the only adversarial tank ever landed on United States soil, the Type 95 light tank deployed by the Japanese during their occupation of the Aleutian Islands during World War II. Jinwei ordered his engineers to develop a light tank capable of neutralizing the inevitable manpower advantage the armed forces of the United States would be able to arrange against him in due time, due to the luxury of a land bridge that was afforded to them and not to his own forces. Thus, the scourge of the snowfields, a deadly amalgamation of mining equipment and high-tech military hardware of death, known as the Chimera, was born. Forming the body of the Chimera is a heavily reinforced Archimedes screw vehicle equipped with a conventional oil-based power plant assumed to be captured as a result of the Chinese surprise assault. Screw-based vehicular locomotion is used to traverse extreme terrain such as mud, swamp, water, ice, and critically, snow, making this chassis a somewhat ideal base for an armored vehicle in the absence of a purpose-built military solution. Affixed to the rugged chassis is a purpose-built weapons platform containing radar, a missile launcher, and a high rate of fire laser weapons that sports an eerie blue bolt of death. Additionally, the platform boasts a suite of electronics, including an advanced control AI, making the Chimera an unmanned ground vehicle, and thus vulnerable to the robotics perk. The unit is apparently the most formidable armored vehicle in either nation's arsenal. According to one soldier in the US Army, put simply, it's a co-opted mining rig that's been changed into an armored vehicle, bigger and tougher than any tank we have in our arsenal. A statement that I personally find to be curious indeed, considering the Chrysler's patent exists in Boston. Although I certainly don't think the patent is a particularly well-designed weapon system, I struggle to see any way that the Chimera could compete. The patent has two 140 millimeter guns in comparison to what basically amounts to a laser turret and a few small scale missiles that I have a hard time seeing as any significant threat to the American tank. Additionally, I would assume the Patton would have a significantly longer range in both armament and traversal owing to her reliance on a nuclear power plant. Thus, I think it's safe to assume that in our arsenal really means currently stationed in Alaska. That, my friends, concludes the known lore relating to the Chimera tank, albeit with a few enhancements made by yours truly in the pursuit of storytelling. Now, without further ado, let's transition into my favorite section of each video. The pros and cons, where I rant and I rave about bits and bobs that probably don't matter. As always, we will start off on the positive side of life with the pros. The overall aesthetic of the Chimera 
is solid. The visual storytelling that is put together here with the marrying of the industrial drilling equipment to the high-tech laser turret is brilliant. On top of that, the vehicle system itself still managed to look somewhat grounded in reality, at least in comparison to other vehicles in the Fallout universe. Despite the initially jarring looks of the Archimedes screws, they turn out to be a perfectly reasonable method for traversing the snowy wastes, albeit slowly, and likely comes with the added bonus of making the vehicle capable of amphibious operations, which is always a feature that is nice to have. Then there is all of the truly intricate details that the modelers took the time to integrate into the Chimera's mesh. From all the, what I assume to be mandatory at this point, rivets, to the possible exhaust ports, to all of the remove before flight type of arrow markings, to the hard points on the front of the vehicle for towing, and finally the quite sturdy industrial looking engines mounted to the rear, it's all pleasingly solid. I also enjoy that the Chimera features multiple weapon systems, although sadly, it's only actually able to employ the laser turret. It's refreshing to see a secondary armament all the same though, just as it's nice to see a weapon system that isn't trying to compensate for anyone's nether region insecurities. The whole militarized portion of the rig actually looks to be of a proper scale to allow the chassis to support its weight without any serious maneuverability penalties. I also like the fact that the turret isn't riveted to the Chimera's body, and thus, I assume, is actually welded. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't point that out given all of my previous riveting rants. Next, I adore the fact that the Chimera is a bona fide animated land vehicle in the Fallout universe. Those are few and far between. Heck, you could even say that about vehicles in general. I mean, in the 3D Fallout era, what vehicles other than the iconic Vertibird have actually been animated. None really come to mind for me, except for maybe the boat to Far Harbor, but I don't really count that since nothing is particularly animated about that whole experience, other than the fact the asset is, you know, in motion. What about you guys? Can you think of any examples that are clearly escaping me? Right, back on track. Although I do have a few concerns with the animation, i.e. the way the radar dish, that I'm glad to see it have by the way, rotates a little awkwardly and has some clipping issues, and the fact, at least to my untrained eye, it looks like the screws are rotating in the opposite direction of the direction they should be in relation to the movement of the tank, it's still thrilling to see a relic of the Sino-American War come to life. Now, let's talk about the things I didn't like so much. Starting with the central premise that the Chimera is tougher than any tank in our arsenal and is fitted with multiple weapons, reinforced armor, and outfitted for long range. I don't know about you, but when I gaze upon the Chimera's shiny flank, I don't think, wow, that's some heavy armor. Honestly, I think, huh, maybe I don't have to blow a gasket about the rivets here because the Chimera is clad in aluminum or some other advanced composite and not a ferrous metal like steel. What I certainly don't think, however, is that the Chimera's armor would be able to effectively resist any anti-armor rounds like what the Chrysler's Patton would be firing. Or heck, even a missile launched from a manned portable anti-tank or MPAT weapon, such as those carried by the strike teams in the T-51B armored cavalry unit deployed in the Battle of Anchorage. Then there is that second bit about the Chimera being outfitted for long range. Yeah, no. This just is a straight up lie. The turret we see in game is clearly only capable of relatively short range anti-infantry operations, and there's no evidence pointing to the contrary. I will concede, however, it is theoretically possible that the turret could adjust power levels per bolt to perhaps increase the range and possible damage output to engage harder targets. But given what we know about the laser rifle modding process, the bolt needs to be focused down a much longer barrel to be effective at extreme ranges. A modification that would surely be visually identifiable if it existed. Finally, on a similar note, in relation to the weapons, as I've already said, I think it's really neat the model actually has multiple weapons, but it's a crying shame that the in-game Chimera can't actually use them. I mean, how much cooler would those Chimera engagements be if it was launching mini missiles at you in addition to suppressing you with laser MG fire? Truly a missed opportunity. For con number two, I'm going to have to go with the fact that Chimera is an unmanned ground vehicle, or UGV. Now don't get me wrong, I don't have any problem with UGVs, or anything like that. I actually think the technology is awesome though I certainly haven't bought into the Hollywood narrative of unmanned systems taking over the job of a well-trained tanker or Mavericks piloting job or anything like that, but there is a lot of potential there. What I do take issue with is the Chimera's implementation of such a system, chiefly with the fact that Chimera is devoid of any sensor tech 
that would be integral to its autonomous operation. It simply doesn't exist, a fact that I find to be rather odd considering Bethesda often makes models about autonomous tech. Mr. Handy has big ol' eyes, three of them in fact. The iBot is an eye. The auto turrets have a nice central Zaku-like eye, and the Vertibots have their goldfish eye sensors. The Chimera though, none of that. I suppose this train of thought also begs the question, okay then, what if the Chimera isn't actually autonomous and the robotics perk being able to be used to disable it is just kind of a false flag? Well, this similarly doesn't work, since there are no hatches or portals through which the system could be manned. A truly unfortunate situation indeed. My third con of any significance is the fact that the Chimera's power plant is conventional. I view this as a con for two reasons. One, because of the nature of the fuel depot assault in the Operation Anchorage simulation, with the premise being that the deletion of two fuel tanks would cripple the entire tank platoon of the Chinese military in the region. Putting aside the fact that there are still many, many more tanks left intact at the depot, there is the fact that the Chinese HQ is an oil refinery at the end of an active pipeline. There is no doubt in my mind that General Jin Wei would have found a way to keep his chimeras in service given the importance of such an asset. Had the tank's power plant instead been nuclear, the fuel depot could have been a coolant depot, and then the fact that the HQ was an oil refinery wouldn't have been nearly as problematic. At least, that's how I see it. The second reason I view the conventional engine as a flaw is because I have serious reservations when it comes to such a system being able to output enough power to effectively utilize a high-powered energy weapon. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a laser scientist or anything, I write code for a living. But to my understanding, laser weapons take an enormous amount of power to function. Could a conventional, i.e. grounded in reality, power supply really be capable of such a thing? To me, it's like trying to say a plasma rifle runs off of real-world AA batteries. I just don't buy it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter in the comments below. Next, I'd like to round out my cons with a couple of nitpicks. First, there aren't any obvious fuel ports, and that bothers me a little. Second, the premise that the chassis of the Chimera is mining equipment is a bit problematic to me. Look, I'm no expert on drilling equipment. Practically all of my knowledge comes from watching far too many episodes of The Curse of Oak Island, but it seems to me that the chassis would need a system to stabilize itself while conducting drilling operations. Granted, I'm sure the screws do a significantly better job of stabilizing the vehicle than a conventional wheeled drilling craft would, but I have a really hard time believing that would be enough. Then there's the obvious flaw relating to the fact there is actually no drilling machinery just the framework for such machinery. But perhaps the example in drilling mode in the Anchorage Fuel Depot has actually already been stripped of all those parts. I will concede that's possible. Third, I think it's a real bummer that the Chimera can only be spawned in the simulation. I mean, technically you can spawn one in the Capital Wasteland, but as soon as you exit the console, it'll disappear like your life will when Starfield releases. And that, my friends, concludes the cons. But don't leave yet. I'd still like to share some potential improvements I'd make to the design with you fine folks. The first enhancement I'd make to the Chimera, because I'm lazy and love low-hanging fruit, would be to paint the bright orange derrick to match the body. The next thing I'd do, quite unsurprisingly, would be to retcon the power plant into being fusion powered. After that, I'd go about effectively leveraging said fusion power by fitting the derrick structure with a high yield Gauss cannon, giving the Chimera self-propelled gun capabilities similar to the Yag Tiger of old and pivotally the Chrysler's Patton. Finally, and I get that the Chinese would not have had the time or resources to do this, but I'd have leveraged the Dragoon's stealth suit tech to shroud the Chimera behind a veil of invisibility as well, giving the Chimera a huge advantage, at least in my opinion, over the Chrysler's Patton main battle tank and allowing the lore of the Alpha Predator Chimera to ring true. That's all folks. Thanks for spending your time hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to help this video reach more people, please do me a solid and hit that thumbs up button or heck thumbs down button. You do you. Special thanks to my subscribers and my lone channel member, Quasi Stellar Object. Your enthusiasm and feedback really helps me keep this channel going and I couldn't do it without you. Spy Dingo, out.